All right. Um, so far, we have seen two kinds of authority that a believer has: redemptive authority, inherited authority, uh, and you know the more clarity we we have <laughs> about these, excuse me, uh, we will be able to face the enemy you know, in a bold way. Now, there are two more that uh, we will talk about in this session. One is positional authority. Okay, positional authority. And the next one being delegated authority. So positional. Excuse me. Uh, so positional authority, as the name itself uh, denotes, okay, sorry everyone, yeah, uh, it talks about a position which we have given by God to us, and I think in your uh, last semester, if I'm not wrong, you had the subject on in Christ Jesus. So we have now been, as believers, positioned in Christ Jesus. And we see through that, you know, God has uh, done so much for us and blessed us with many, many privileges. One of the things that God has done in Christ Jesus for us is that he has now raised us up and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. This is in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 6. So what God has done is he has redeemed us and he has given us a position sitting together with Jesus in the heavenly places. So whenever we talk about, you know, sitting in a, a particular you know, place of authority, uh, that does not come easy. I'm sure you all understand. You know, no one can go and sit on the throne of a king or, for that matter, uh, nobody can go and occupy the thrones of the minister, ministers of the king. Each one is chosen. The ministers are chosen to be positioned in those places. Now, from what we read, we understand that the believer has been made to sit together in the where? heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Though physically, you and I may be very much here on the earth, uh, spiritually, we must recognize, you know, I, I may be sitting here on my chair right now and you know, each one of you in your homes, you're sitting on your uh, chair with a desk in front of you and you know, watching or listening to uh, this lecture. And you might wonder, you know, what authority do I have? But spiritually, we are told that right now, our position is with Christ in the heavenly places okay so take a moment if you want to just close your eyes and imagine yourself you know, physically you are here but spiritually you and i all of us we are seated together with christ in the heavenly places spiritually that's where you and i are seated right now and comes coming with the you know, those those thrones, if you want to call it, you know, uh, next to the king of kings is an authority you know, which has been given to each one of us. So there is an authority that we carry because we are seated with Christ in the heavenly places. Now, Adam, if you go back to creation and the first man, you no, know, he did not have this kind of a dominion and authority. 
given to him yes he was given the authority to rule and reign on the earth and subdue uh, you know creatures and things like that uh, but after the lord jesus came and bought our redemption not only did he give back the dominion that originally belonged to adam you know back to mankind but he also now gave us an additional form of authority what is that in christ jesus we have been seated with christ in the heavenly places so the once again you know the backing of the heaven is with us and as we saw last time i don't know if i mentioned it but we being seated in the heavenly places is the highest position okay and uh, if you study scripture <clears throat> a lot of things are there about the second heavens where where uh, yeah the bible doesn't mention the second heavens but you know there there is this whole thing about powers and principalities uh, rulers of wickedness the demonic realm and the demonic structure Okay, the authorities of the demonic world being part of the second heavens but notice you and i are seated above that in the heavens in the heavenly places you know spiritually that is our position above every demonic authority so that is just to help us understand that physically you and i may feel that i am i'm a human being you know i i am not uh, invincible in any sense or i am uh, you know just just a person who is walking the earth yes that is true we are but mortal created uh, beings of god but when i am a believer in the lord jesus christ that is also a spiritual reality that reveals that we are strong because we have been given authority and seated with Christ in the highest position and so i can use that authority how do we use the authority you know we'll talk a little bit about it before we end today's class our words and that issue the uh, uh of the commands that we issue see we we can command the devil we can say i bind you in the name of jesus or i command you uh, to leave i cast you out in the name of jesus now even the boldness which that it will come from our understanding you know if i only think that i'm just a human being and yeah i'm a child of god so what you know uh, how can i how can i uh, command the devil to leave or how can i command a sickness to leave how can i command an oppression to be broken remember the spiritual realities i'm physically here but spiritually i'm seated with christ in the heavenly place it's a high position of authority and thereby you know when i issue a command it flows with that authority so positional authority is also something that we must understand and that is also a war cry against the devil so every time demons try to confuse us and say oh you're just a human being you're a weak human being what are you talking about you can remind them that no you know as god's word says ephesians 2:6 i'm seated with christ in the heavenly places i'm above you you know I, demons so i command you to leave i command you to stop your activities i say no to your trespassing in jesus name so you know, we can take authority and use our authority so that's how we understand positional authority the next form of authority here is delegated authority okay delegated authority is as a representative of christ and i think i have mentioned this to our class earlier uh, uh, if there is a bank Okay, where uh, one has an account let's say i'm not able to go to the bank uh, so i can authorize let's say my sister i can authorize her give her a letter which says uh, so this person is sent by me and please provide 
the privileges of operating my account in this this way okay because i personally am not able to come there so i have delegated authority to my sister to operate you know, something as important as my uh, my bank account so in the same way you know the lord jesus when he told us there are many scriptures you know that say that uh, all authority on heaven and earth you know mine i i give it to you and you go uh, baptize in the name of the father the son the holy spirit uh, so you find that there is a call to use the name of christ the name of jesus in my name they shall cast out demons you know mark 16 verses 18 and 19 we read there so what is it that we have to operate in the authority of christ jesus said in my name you will cast out so that is like a badge that has been given to us okay that is like uh, if you want to say a badge of authority the name of jesus that has been given to us so we operate in the name of jesus and the demons have to uh, uh, bow down to the authority in the name of jesus now it is also uh, the understanding can also be such that of course we know that the name of jesus is the most powerful name as philippians 2 says that because jesus humbled himself you know god gave him a name above every other name so it is the highest name and at that name you know every knee should bow the moment you mention the name of somebody who has authority things happen okay uh so i was just sharing this uh, testimony with uh, some of my uh, you know church people what happened is there was uh, uh, an elderly person who recently you know i know that this person had uh, uh, a fracture a hip fracture and uh, uh, you know that uh, individual does not have uh, a big job or anything that they can pay for their own surgery so i went to a particular institution where they do provide uh, some concession for people like this you know for the surgery to be done uh but it was not a lot you know the concession which was given and i was really concerned i was thinking okay how is it that you know we are able to take care of this person and some of us who knew we kind of tried to raise funds and all because it was necessary the surgery to be done but at that point you know i just felt like why don't we go and talk to the uh, one of the you know leading uh, uh, people in uh, in this place so i just went and had a word with that person and that person was so busy that they hardly gave me 2 minutes time to talk so then i just shared okay uh, this elderly person who does not have help has had this fracture here is the x ray report uh, like could you please guide and uh, uh, you know they uh, knowing the situation uh, they kind of said okay go and mention to the person who needs to uh, follow up on this uh, case just mention my name that's all they said nothing else so i went out of that place and i was thinking how is it helpful you know to go and tell uh, the person who is dealing with this case that uh, uh, this particular individual has sent me to you then i thought okay i must be honest so i met the person in charge and uh, gave them the entire background and i said uh, also sir like i happened to meet so and so they just said that i must tell you that they have sent me that's all and after that you know there was uh, like they they took the the entire matter very seriously and you know they kind of examined the situation whether you know the person is eligible uh, for more concessions this and that so they did their best and uh, somehow you know the entire thing worked out uh, and the elderly person could could have the treatment which they needed and i am just till now i think about what happened you know the 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 main person there did not have time just made one remark and said 
when you go and meet so and so you tell them i sent you and uh, that's what i did i went and i said so and so sent me and you know they they uh, took up the whole matter uh, with with uh, great speed and things were done things were considered because of the now when i look back i think maybe because of the credibility of the name of that particular individual you know, who who sent me and uh, you know the the favor that came through that and it's really god it's really god who moved upon the heart of that person to even say that when say i sent you uh but then i thought about the name of jesus because that's what jesus said isn't it in my go in my name and if you recall when jesus had sent his disciples they went and they were casting out demons they came back telling jesus in your name we cast out demons demons are fleeing in your name wow jesus we are amazed we are amazed because if a human name you know like the example that i shared if that individual could carry power and authority for things to get done faster because of you know uh, what they had as a person just think about the name of jesus you know many times we pray we say okay i am praying in jesus name or you know while while uh, telling somebody we just say okay i i bless you in the name of jesus uh, i speak healing over you in the name of jesus we say it but we do we understand the meaning of the name of jesus which we are attaching to our prayer or our command it carries a lot of weight there is delegated authority you know if you say if you use the name of your let's say your president or your prime minister has sent you somewhere and you have a letter that says okay i authorize so and so and there is so much what a backing you carry with you that you can enter they will they will allow you okay come you can enter these wonderful places because the person with authority has sent you Now imagine we have been given the greatest name the name of Jesus and we are commanding demons and yet we are getting scared and we are saying i don't know if a demon is going to listen i don't know if uh, you know this situation is going to change we just use the name of Jesus which carries authority and power okay uh so just i mean just think i i i think i am not, i don't think i'm saying it in a very um you know good uh, oratory sort of a fashion but in a very simple way i'm helping us to uh, think what a name what authority has been given to us and we must pray and ask the holy spirit lord help me have a revelation of the power of the name of jesus that as jesus said right luke 10 19 he said i give you authority over all demon all the power of the enemy i give you authority over all the power of the enemy now we can go back to what we studied earlier i give you authority authority is exousia okay uh, so we have exousia the power um, to do something we have exousia over all the we said power is also dunamis dunamis is um the ability the ability okay of the enemy so we have exousia over the dunamis of the enemy so we have been given that authority that can do something about the ability of the uh devil so we are really if you try to summarize everything that we are try we we are talking about today we classified it in a nice technical way we have redemptive authority we have inherited authority we have positional authority and now we are saying that we have delegated authority meaning somebody has sent us and that person carries authority okay so we are really in a position where we can walk in victory and because the subject is dealing with the devil 
the demonic uh, uh, spirits, the demonic forces, we can exercise authority against the demonic spirits. Okay, uh, and we can be victorious. So uh, we just need to awaken to what we already have. Now, if we want to put it in a different way, you know, delegated authority, you can also say when we go against, let's say, a sin that I am tempted to, uh, tempted into, or, or the enemy is tempting me to commit that sin, or let's say uh, I'm going against demons, I'm binding them or casting them out, or something else, right? any work of the devil that I'm going against. When I go, and I don't mean it, uh, I'm not saying it in a proud or an arrogant way, a very humble way, it is like Jesus going. So when I am standing in front of somebody and you know engaging in the deliverance ministry, and uh, I say, come out in the name of Jesus, it is like Jesus is saying, come out in the name of Jesus. Because I go with delegated authority. I am the representative. Okay, as a believer, I may be present in that place, but for the devil, how does it work for the devil? It's like Jesus telling the devil. If I say in the name of Jesus, it's e it is equal to Jesus standing there and saying, come out. Okay, so that is the understanding of delegated authority. So we, we can remember that whenever I'm taking, I'm fighting against the devil, it's not like one weak human being, one weak believer. How will the devil listen to me? No, 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 no. Look at the authority that has been given. Delegated authority. When you stand, what does the devil see? He sees Jesus standing there. And that is why he's very interested in manipulating my mind. Because if he can get me to believe that I am weak, I don't have power, you know, I can't do it, then he can play all his games with me. But as a believer, if I'm very firm and I know, hey, if I say I'm coming to you in the name of Jesus, I mean it. It's like Jesus telling you, get out, devil. Okay, Then he, he cannot go against that command because it's you know backed by the greatest name ever in the in the universe okay, the name of jesus so you know, this is the understanding as believers now would just encourage us i know for a few of us it might be new uh, for some of us some insights yeah okay we are able to grasp it but keep going back meditating 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 even for me uh, let me just be honest I'm building, still building the, the revelation of what all this means and how we are able to use it uh, in our you know, daily battles against uh, Satan and demons. Uh, but where will that strength come from? Where will that faith, in other words, let's say faith, well, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So keep going back, keep meditating. And from there, you know, you have your strength. Now, <clears throat> once I remember this also happened, uh, yeah, somebody, again, you know, demon-possessed, manifesting, and uh, uh, our team, like Pastor had mentioned to some of us and said, okay, if uh, all of you can gather and uh, pick a time, go minister to this person, it would be very nice. Uh, they are, you know, possessed by a demon. So in preparation to that session, uh, what I did was I uh, read the, the Bible. I, I read every passage where Jesus cast out a demon. Every passage where, you know, uh, Jesus was ministering deliverance. Just read, meditate. How did he do it? You know, what did he do? So... What are we doing? You know, whenever we want to move in a certain area, we must get 
the faith from God's word. So go back to the word, meditate, 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 meditate. So then when you go and minister, you know, we are moving from a place of faith. So if possible, I'm saying, you know, if let's say, like in this case, we knew that on a certain day we have to go, we have to pray for someone. So there is time to prepare. Now, many times what happens is we may not have the time to prepare. Suddenly, you know, you're just uh, having your usual ministry at church and someone begins to manifest. Uh, and then you have to you know, deal with that situation. Or you went uh, on missions for something else and you're serving, uh, ministering the word of God and you know, here you have somebody who needs deliverance. So there are times when we will not have an opportunity to really prepare. Okay, but we can always be prepared as long as we have the right understanding. So meditating on the truth of God's word is the place from where we can get that boldness. Now, just because, you know, uh, we are, we learned today, whatever we learned. I understand that uh, some of us may need some time to, to really digest, take it all in, to start growing in this area of uh, you know, using our authority. So that's fine. That's fine. You know, we are all growing. Uh, so don't, don't think that, oh, okay, now this is it. You know, I have to flow like in a certain way in, in authority. Yes, we have understood everything, but uh, you could take more time if you feel that you need it and uh, go back and meditate. Okay, So that will bring the confidence and or that will, in other words, we say that will bring the faith that you and I need to um, effectively use what we are talking about. So let me just pause for a moment. A couple of other insights in the same chapter that I have to deal with. But uh, yeah, let's just take a break. And uh, let me hear your voices. Any thoughts, any comments, experiences, questions? So I, I know there are some brothers from uh, Africa here. Uh, so any any uh, experiences that you might want to share? Okay. Okay. No worries. Uh, we will proceed further. So now that we have uh, learned about the basis for our authority, uh, the important thing is to acknowledge it. Okay. Uh, and uh, as we meditate, I told us that, you know, our faith in this area will also begin to increase. Mm, and, uh, you know, we will, we will, start taking authority you know when we are not aware that we have this that we have been redeemed uh, you know satan can ignorance is his power so when we don't know he can play around but when we are aware uh, then it's an opportunity for us to step up and um, use that authority. So let's say uh, a sickness which you sense is um, like it has a like a demonic uh, association. So immediately you could you can command and you can say, okay, I command the sickness in the name of Jesus to leave uh, Satan. So what happens is when I when I get this truth into me in my daily life as I'm going about my daily life and discerning things. A circumstance, uh, anything, you know, I can start 
using the authority you know moment by moment i can use the authority it's not just for you know pulpit or ministry time no yeah that but in addition to that just everyday life everyday um, victory you know that comes out of the fact that i know my authority and every believer knows their authority okay and we can exercise uh, this authority to oppose the works of the devil any way in which he may want to intrude into our lives or intrude into our family uh, and uh, you know uh, also our church right uh, our, our church folks so know it acknowledge it use it and uh, uh, see the power of god in those situations okay uh, and how do we do it one of the main ways in which authority works is through the words that we speak um, so our words are powerful as many of you are aware of that uh, scripture which says life and death is in the power of the tongue okay uh, so when we use our words we could use those words in a positive way or you know we say even death so when you speak negative words uh, over yourself that could also affect so the reference is proverbs 18:21 life and death is in the power of our tongues uh, so the authority remember as i shared with you that uh, individual said go and tell that i sent you and in those words was the power that worked so beautifully i thought of how the centurion went to jesus and said lord only say a word that's enough just say a word and my servant will be well because he understood the meaning of authority through the words so how do i exercise authority even over my life you know i can speak blessings I can speak blessings over my health over you know again everything whatever i listed out family finances everything but if i speak opposite uh you know let's say a parent is uh speaking negative about their child and saying oh this child uh, so problematic this child uh, is only giving me troubles this child uh Uh, does not have any capacity to learn what is happening you know the parent carries authority and generally authority is released through the words that are being spoken so when they speak these negative words authority is being released but in the negative sense so you know we must really be careful to never uh, agree with the lies of the devil so for us to walk victorious in the authority that jesus has given us always speak in alignment with the truth of god's word and that will release the authority so let's say a child is uh, you know very naughty and all but still the parent can say okay i know this is happening right now but you know i uh, i speak over you in the name of jesus that you shall be taught of the lord great shall be your peace you know my children are uh, like an arrow in in the quiver of a righteous man you know my uh, god said that i will pour out my spirit on your descendants so you know i'm what am i doing circumstances are different but i'm using my authority through the words that i speak what is satan trying to do bring confusion in the family and give us a an image that oh your child is very naughty will not grow up well but i am taking authority and i am saying no satan i will not agree with your word but i am going to speak the word of the lord over my child you know children are a heritage from the lord you know they are a, uh, they are a gift from the lord so i i bless this child in the name of jesus so that is also spiritual warfare you speak the truth you speak the truth and if you go back to the time when jesus and the disciples were on the boat okay you remember there was a storm and the disciples got so scared how did jesus exercise his authority his words he just said peace be still so similarly let's say i'm going through a a certain storm 
i can say okay this uh pressures the strain stress that i'm going through peace be still i just took my authority all the authority that we have talked about right so i just took authority and i released it how did i release it i spoke i believe in my heart and i speak it with my mouth that is the way in which i release my authority so remember to release the authority through the words that we speak okay and the words should be in alignment to the truth of god's word okay so any comments uh, regarding this before we move on further okay wonderful so yeah we are uh, quite okay with that understanding so i'll just move forward let me just plug in my uh, laptop the charges okay yeah so let's move on then uh things are quite clear we'll go to chapter 7 here uh since we have spoken about spiritual authority uh that every believer has and the release of that authority through the words that we are speaking now let us also look at the realm of authority or the boundary uh within which we can exercise our authority okay uh and you know what is part of that realm uh, or who is part of that realm that we can exercise authority over obviously we can exercise authority over demonic powers and their activities okay? and we've seen how jesus has completely defeated them so we can exercise authority on demons now what is the other way of reacting to demons you know us getting very obsessed with the work of demons and being paranoid about what demons are doing and uh, you know how uh, they are one up uh, in in their uh, you know approach against us so what also happens as a as a result of you know studying uh, demonology is people could become more con we say demon conscious now that is unhealthy we must not become more demon conscious uh, but what we are studying must make us more god conscious and how god has uh, defeated the devil and given us the power over the devil so uh, you know just for our class to encourage our class to not become you know they use the term spooky spiritual okay spooky spiritual is like uh, uh, giving the devil credit for absolutely everything everything that might happen okay anything that we are unable to understand we just blame it on the devil um and say that oh the devil is doing this uh the devil is opening my window the devil is you know so that is extreme just because we have knowledge about demons we must not think that you know any and every activity that's going on in our lives is demon sometimes you know uh, the the things that are happening could plainly be natural i think i have already shared that with us and I, also it could be because of our own decisions okay so the the difficulty that we are going through or the lack that we are going through of the decisions that we made so everything is not influenced by demons uh, and for believers to blame the devil 
for everything would be something like uh, you know spooky spiritual so you know i'm just kind of uh, sharing it with all of us uh, just for our understanding okay okay and going back to that same example of uh, you know a child being naughty <clears throat> Like I remember uh, also interacting with, uh, you know, like a set of parents, uh, the very wonderful believers. But then, you know, they were like, oh, my, my child is very naughty. It's, uh, it's demonic. So I'm ca casting out demons uh, from my child every day. I mean, we were talking about a child who's like, what? three four years old something like that and you know every normal child that age is naughty so there is no question of interpreting the normal things of life with the knowledge that we have now so it really uh, uh, was uh, somewhat disturbing so what i'm trying to say is all of us here, we really need the wisdom of God and the discernment of the Holy Spirit. Yes, if something is demonic, then the Spirit of God will uh, reveal that to us. But without that, to tag, you know, I have to cast out a demon uh, of every situation that I'm going through, uh, better not to go in that path. Uh, so don't become demon conscious and that all believers be aware but don't become demon conscious on the other hand you can become authority conscious you know you can you can know that you have the even if satan is doing this demons are doing that uh, we have the authority authority and jesus said luke 10 19 i give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you okay and of course you know he uh, again told his disciples he said and these signs will follow those who believe in my name what you will cast out demons so we have already been given authority to use on demons, on demonic spirits. Okay? We are victorious over demon spirits. But don't make everything um, about demons. Okay, So that is one point number one. So we have uh, authority over demons and all the power of the enemy. Okay, Paul, uh, you have a question, Paul? Okay, I'm unable to hear you. You would need to unmute yourself. Okay, not sure uh, if that was meant to be. So anyway, uh, we'll just go back to what we're discussing. So we have power over demons. Okay. What else do we have power over? We have power over demonic works. So 1 John 3, 8, we see there that Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. So obviously, Satan is engaging in you know destructive activities. Now, these activities can affect, we've seen that, we've seen how they can affect an individual, they can affect communities, they can affect regions, and they can also uh, be manifested in various ways. Okay? So it can manifest as um, sickness in people's bodies because we see in Acts 10.38 right, that Jesus... Um, healed those who were oppressed of the devil so healing was necessary for the work of the devil which is oppression so it can manifest a sickness also the work of the devil okay again sometimes this happens so demonic works can be manifested in the form of sickness in the form of uh, you know confusion in the form of fear hindrance opposition disturbances so many ways we have authority over demonic works 
So whatever, if you sense Satan is doing something, you and I can go against it and battle it out. So we have authority over demons. We have authority over demonic works. We have authority over demonic influences. Okay, what are these influences? Remember, we we talked of that progression. First, you have influence, and then it'll move on to oppression. Then it'll move on to um, you know possession. Then domination. So influence would be things like uh, you know fear, temptation, all these mind mind games that Satan plays with us, deception, spiritual blindness. Okay, so all forms of things that the enemy can uh, influence people with. Now, we ourselves could be battling under a temptation uh, or any of these, these uh, struggles, not spiritual blindness, because spiritual blindness is something that uh, Satan can bring upon unbelievers. So we could be battling an influence of the devil or others could be battling an influence of the devil or let's say large groups of people can be battling the influence of the devil uh, but we can go against it if there be any demonic influence we can go against it okay and uh, time and again we have seen that god has used um, human beings uh, with, the, with the call of God on their lives to overcome the, the crisis that uh, Satan and his demons have created against, you know, even nations, but through the wisdom of God that has been overcome. So if you go back and look at the life of uh, Joseph, you know, a time of calamity and famine over a nation, you had a man of God. God used, well, see, look at this. God is always good, trying to do good things. So through Joseph, what did God do? There was a preparation to uh, keep the food, grains required for a time of famine. And there was sufficient food for everyone, right? So Moses, you find that through Moses, leading the people out of Egypt. And uh, also, you know, you find um, overcoming any other kind of challenges along the way and if you remember pharaoh's court the magicians trying to compete the power of uh, god through moses's life overcame what the sorcerers were trying to do so god's power is so much greater and any influence of the evil one god's power is able to overcome again in the lives of elijah and elisha wonderful example supernatural miracles were released through their lives people had uh, you know you read different situations there right uh, there was no rain there was a lack of food uh, you know somebody had lost something uh, a mother did not have a child the child had died calamity destruction you know evil works influences of the devil but supernatural miraculous power of god intervening in these circumstances and there was food there was rain you know there was uh, uh, what else uh, life raised from the dead so god is working in a positive way against the demonic influences of uh, the enemy so these are all things that we even in today's world we can expect from god uh, to see the influences being broken. So what I'll do is I'll just stop at this point. And let's pray and close today's class. We'll come back and pick up. And we are moving more and more into, you know, the practical ministry of deliverance. Uh, so, yeah, we'll, we'll get into that uh, very shortly. So can somebody please pray and uh, close out today's class? Let's pray. Loving Father, once again, Lord, we thank you so much for speaking to us, Lord, through your daughter, Lord. Lord, I thank you that you have given us authority, Lord. Lord, I pray that you help us, Lord, to know the, the, all the authorities, Lord, what you have given to us, Lord. Help us, Lord, to execute it, Lord, in our life, Master. And Lord, help us to be very humble, Lord, for you, Lord. That, Lord, we will not be proud, Lord, that we have everything, but, Lord, in every moment, Lord, we acknowledge 
your sovereignty in our life master lord i continuously pray whatever the things lord we are learning these days lord holy spirit lord you uh, create a hunger to implement it in our life master lord we thank you so much for every one of us lord in jesus name i pray amen Amen, amen. Thank you, thank you, Subhashish, for uh, that prayer. And uh, yes, class, um, uh, continue to meditate on these things. And uh, yeah, hopefully your uh, assignment will be released either tonight or by tomorrow. You'll have sufficient time to complete it, and uh, we will meet again in the next class. Okay? God bless you. Have a great weekend. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Bye.